worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you.
is so powerful. It's just this declaration of all these characteristics of who Jesus is, that he's a miracle worker, he's a light, that even when we don't see it and we don't feel it, that he is there and he is working. And can I tell you, the timing of the Lord is never wrong. It is always perfect, even when we don't understand. And right about when the beginning of all this craziness over the last few months had begun, this new song came out and it's called Lord Sent Revival. And I think it's so fitting for the time period that we're in right now. It's just a song saying, Lord, open the heavens, send us more of you. And I think if there was ever a time for that prayer to be prayed, it's right now. So as we sing this song, I would encourage you to declare this over your own life, over your family, over your friends, and just say, Lord, we are hungry for more of you. We are desperate, we are wanting more of you in this place tonight. Lord, send revival, Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land. Like you've done it before, you will do it again. Lord, send revival. Send it now, move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land. Like you've done it before, would you do it again? Lord, send revival, Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land. Do it again, have it break.
Jesus, you are so good. Lord, you make a way for us. You are a miracle worker. Lord, I pray that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit in this place. That the sweet presence of the Lord would just be here with every single person, that we would know that you are here with us. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to stir things in students' lives. Lord, that we would continue to be expectant of you and just long for more of you. I pray that you just have your way over the rest of this night. In your name, amen. I am so excited to get to be with you in this very first virtual youth camp. This is new for you, but it's actually new for me too because I never went to youth camp growing up. So I'm excited. This is my very first youth camp. So for all of you who are newbies, we are doing this together. Over the next few minutes, um, I just want to share with you a little bit about the Jesus that changed my life. Um, and to make it just really clear, I, I just want to tell you my story. I want to tell you about how Jesus changed my life and how I really think that following Jesus would be the best decision that you could ever make. And I don't say that lightly because let me tell you that there is a cost to following Jesus. The Bible says that um, before you start a building project that you should count the cost so that you don't get halfway through and realize that you don't have enough. And it's the same way even with our faith. We have to count the cost. Do we understand it fully? No, but we have to realize that there is a cost. When we come to God, he asks for us to bring our whole selves, our issues, our background, our challenges, our preferences, everything, to him. And then he begins to walk with us on a lifetime journey of knowing him and making him known. There's a cost to following Jesus, and I know that. And that's why I don't take it lightly when I tell you that following Jesus will be the best decision that you could ever make in your life. Let's just take a second and pray and get right into it. Father, I thank you so much for the people who are watching this right now. Lord, I pray that you would speak to their hearts. I pray that you would allow me to connect even through the screen. And God, I pray that someone would make a decision today and that they would never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I grew up as a pastor's kid, um, and my dad was an evangelist. In fact, um, until I was six or eight years old, he was doing about 300 dates a year. That means that we were in church all of the time. And from the time that I can remember, I loved Jesus. In fact, I, I got saved when I was three years old, and I was filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I was six. I was in junior Bible quiz and all of the different church things. Um, I loved coming to church. I loved singing about Jesus. I loved learning about Jesus. I loved reading my Bible. I loved all of that. I wasn't just a good church kid. I was a really good kid. In fact, I didn't even chew gum in church, just saying. But somewhere along the way, a lie crept into my life. A lie that said that my imperfections, the times that I would sin and miss the mark, the times that I would make poor decisions, the times that I just wouldn't be who I knew that I was called to be, that those times separated me from God. That even though I had accepted Jesus into my heart and into my life and I truly wanted to serve him, that when I messed up, it was a disqualifier. And that somehow I needed to do penance or do something to get back in God's graces. And so because of that, I started to treat my Christianity a little bit like a earning game. When I was doing good, then I felt really good about God and how close I was to him and how things were going. And I was sure of my salvation. 
but when I wasn't doing so great, when I wasn't making all the choices I needed to make, when I made mistakes, well then, oh, maybe, maybe I'm going to hell. Maybe I'm, I'm not gonna be, maybe, maybe all of these questions would come into my mind. It's really hard to love a God that you aren't sure loves you all of the time. But see, this is what the Bible says, is the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. See, the Jesus that I know, the God that I serve, is not looking for reasons to exclude you from spending eternity with him. The Jesus that I know, the God that I serve, already knows the issues that you have in your life life. The Jesus that I know and the God that I serve came for sinners. And he knows that just because you sign a card and you come down and pray a prayer, you are not instantly going to stop doing all of the things that you were doing before. You are going to struggle in this life. If you don't believe me, look around. There's not a single adult in your church that's perfect. There's not a single adult that I've ever met that is perfect. Now, are we all improving? Are we all moving in this journey with Jesus? Absolutely. But I'll tell you a little secret. At 38 years old, I am still learning even the things that are in my heart that shouldn't be there. Think about that for a second. How can I become perfect if I don't even see the things that are in my heart that shouldn't be there? See, following Jesus is about a relationship. It's not just about perfection. But for me, I bought into that reward and punishment view of God. When I do something good, he's rewarding me. When I'm doing something bad, he's punishing me. And I'm always measuring to see if I measure up. The problem is this, is you don't measure up. You don't measure up and neither do I. I, I. I was the leader in the youth group. I prayed all the time. I did all the different things. I went to college and told my roommates about Jesus and I never partied and I never drank and I never smoked and I never hung out with anyone who did. I made great grades. I was engaged to a pastor and I was miserable and hurting and empty on the inside and I couldn't tell anyone because that's not the way Christians are supposed to feel. You don't have to hide from God. He sees you and he knows you and he wants you anyway. See the Jesus that I serve, the Jesus who captured my heart, when he came to earth, he didn't just die and then was resurrected three days later. That's not the whole story. See, he spent three years and four books within this compilation of books we call the Bible, showing us how to love and how to live and what it looks like to follow him. See, Jesus went out of his way to spend time with people that other people wouldn't spend any time with. He hung out with tax collectors. He hung out with his oppressors. He hung out with Samaritans who were the marginalized and those who, who the Jews didn't think really deserved a seat at the table. He stood up and spoke out against injustice. He was such an incredible and radical figure all through his life. And it was his radicalness that really caused people to want to kill him in the first place. He's not looking for a reason to reject you. He spent 33 years on this earth understanding every single challenge and temptation that you face, and he wants to walk with you every step of the way. So I found myself at 20 years old, sitting on my bed again, crying again, 
desperate again. And that time, just something different happened. I started to pray, and I just said, God, I can't do this anymore. I can't hold on any longer. All of the accolades, all of the grades, all of the awards, all of the good service, all of the things that I had done to that point to make myself feel like I was accepted by God, none of it had worked. I still felt dirty. I still felt unloved. I still felt like I was not enough. I still was doubting whether or not, honestly, I even was going to heaven. But Jesus met me exactly where I was. This image flashed in my mind. Uh, you know, those, those images of, of the um, rope and then there's a cat hanging on to the end of it. You see it a lot in sarcastic secretaries' offices. And I saw that kind of image and honestly, I got mad. I thought to myself, yeah, God, that's exactly how I feel. I feel like that cat just holding on at the end. Thank you for the visual. But then I felt the Holy Spirit speak to my heart in such a real and a powerful way. And I felt like he said this. I never asked you to hold on. I asked you to let go and let me love you. I asked you to let go and let me love you. And in that moment, I just let go. I let go of trying to be good enough. I let go of trying to do it on my own. I let go of, of trying to be enough for salvation. I let go of trying to hold on so desperately to exactly what I felt like I needed to do. I just let go and I said, God, you're just going to have to love me warts and all. You created me. You said you loved me, and now I need you to love me exactly as I am. And friend, that's exactly what he did. In that moment, I felt such love come into my life. And where there had been a hole before, I felt like he just filled me up. H have I struggled since then? Absolutely. Have I had challenges since then? Without a doubt. Have I messed up and missed the mark since then? No kidding. But never have I doubted that I was still in a relationship with a loving God who cared for me and had a plan for my life. See, you can't serve Jesus constantly being afraid that he is going to reject you. That's not a good foundation for a relationship. You have to know right now that if you choose to follow Jesus, that he's going to walk with you every step of the way, even when you stumble. And friend, you're going to stumble. Friend, you're going to go through some seasons of difficulty. You're going to go through some seasons where you may not feel his presence. You may are going to go through some seasons where you disappoint yourself. You're going to go through those seasons. I can guarantee it. But Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, your sin does not intimidate God. Your issues do not intimidate God. Your past does not intimidate God. None of that intimidates God. Instead, his invitation is the same from the time Jesus came all the way to now. Come and follow me. It's simple. We make it complicated, but it's simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. That's what the Bible says. Take Jesus' hand and begin to walk with him. It's going to be a journey. It's going to take learning and growing and becoming. You don't go and get your life cleaned up perfectly and then come to Jesus. It doesn't work like that. Instead, we say, Jesus, you issued an invitation. You love me. You care for me. You came 2,000 years ago through time and space to rescue me. You knew what you were getting 
You know me from the very deepest part of myself. I can't trick you. I can't try to convince you. I can't put on a face or a facade for you. You know me and you still said you want me. So, okay, you got me. I want to follow you every step of the way. And this is the good news. Is the Bible tells us that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He doesn't outsource any part of our faith to us. Instead, he wants to initiate it with you. He wants to walk with you every single step of the way. He wants to see you all the way through to the end of your life so that when you stand before him, it's not because of all the good things you did that you'll get into heaven, but instead it's because of his great sacrifice and it's because of his great love, and it's because of his greatness, and he will get all of the glory for your life. See, the Jesus that met me when I was 20 years old, he was the same Jesus that met me when I was three. He was the same Jesus that had walked with me every step of the way. But at 20, I finally stopped stressing about it and let him love me. And since then, my relationship with him has changed my life in ways that I cannot even begin to explain. Before I understood he loved me exactly where I was, there were things that I would measure and I'd go, well, is this right or wrong? Now that's not even the question. It's, is this good or is this best? It's, is this going to move me further towards him or is this going to push me away? Because friend, there are very few things that I'm willing to give up just to appease religion. But I will give up anything, anything that gets in the way of me and Jesus. That's the difference between a relationship and a set of rules. That's the difference between following Jesus because you're afraid you're gonna go to hell and following Jesus because he wants to walk with you every step of the way to heaven. That's the difference. I don't want you to accept Jesus just as a get out of hell free card. I want you to meet my Jesus, the one who loves you, who sees you, who knows you, who doesn't forget about the things that are deep and important to you in your heart, who has a plan for you, who wants to use you in his incredible plan to bring heaven to earth. He loves you, he sees you. I just wish I could reach through the camera and hug each one of you and look in your eyes and just tell you with all of my heart that this Jesus that I know that has changed my life is not sitting up in heaven waiting for an opportunity to judge you, but instead is standing right in front of you with arms open saying, bring me your mess. I can handle it. We can walk together every step of the way. See, that's my Jesus. It's a simple story. The invisible God 2,000 years ago came in the person of Jesus. He lived a perfect life. He showed us how to love everyone. He loved the people in his group, even though they were super messed up and imperfect. He died an unjust death. And then three days later, he proved he was God by raising himself from the grave. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the grave is available for you today. All you need to do is just say, Jesus, I believe in you. I accept your sacrifice. I want to follow you. And that spirit will be with you and will be walking with you every step of the way, all the way to heaven. So what's holding you back? What's keeping you from really choosing Jesus? Uh, don't let it be your friends. Friends come and go. Jesus will be with you your entire life. Don't let it be your mistakes. He knows about them already. Don't let it be your doubts. He's not afraid of your doubts and he's not afraid of your questions. Some of the most incredible mighty men of God in this Bible had doubts and questions 
all the way along and God never even chastised them for them. Instead, he just simply said, bring your questions to me. Don't let it be that you think that it would be better if you just did it later. I promise you, if you come to Jesus and you let him love you exactly where you are, you will never, ever regret it. Will you pray with me right where you are? Father, I pray that you would touch the hearts of the people who are in this room. Lord, for those who were like me, who wanted so desperately to follow you, but just have felt condemned and have felt like they just weren't living up and have constantly wondered, am I saved? Am I not saved? Does God love me? Does he not love me? And it felt like it was this up and down game of being in with God and out with God. God, I pray that you would speak truth to their hearts and that they would see that you love them right now as much as you ever could love them. And that you're willing to walk with them through the mountains and the valleys. And that the valleys are not places of rejection, but instead you are even closer to them in those moments. And for those who've never accepted you, God, I pray that they would get a vision of a God who invites them to a life of incredible adventure. Incredible adventure as we partner with you to bring heaven to earth, to set things right. Lord, I pray for the leaders and the pastors in the room as right now they prepare to offer this beautiful invitation of salvation. God, I pray that you would guide their words and that all of us would remember that you accept us exactly where we are and you are willing to walk with us every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.